Eight years ago, I first came to the UK on a summer holiday in Cornwall. And at this point in time, everything in England is charming. Uh, the accents, the cups of tea, the cobblestone streets, it's just a field trip for joy. I mean, Pride and Prejudice, Downton Abbey, all the rest. And I was living at that point in time in a place called Launston. I went and found a little tea shop and sat and read my Bible as I would have done every day. And I was reading a passage from Isaiah chapter 49, where it says, the calling of God is on us to the coastlands. From the body of our mother, he has named us by name. He's made his word in our mouth like a sharp sword. And the calling on our lives is to bring light to the nations and salvation to the ends of the earth. And it's actually a prophetic word anticipating Jesus, but I believe sometimes scripture has both a, a broad and a particular prophetic interpretation. And so I just wrote in the corner of my Bible, God, are you calling me to the coastland of Cornwall with a bunch of, I literally wrote question marks in it. And I have no framework for what it would mean to move to another country following the call of God. But I simply knew in that moment as well that there was an invitation for me to say yes to Jesus. I resonate with this beautiful quote from Sam Wells where he says that there's something about the followers of Jesus being invited to come over to the other side, to leave their places of intimacy and security in obedience to the call of Christ. And I often say that if I knew what it was going to mean to say yes to Jesus and moving to the UK, if I knew the loneliness and the isolation and the disruption that it would cause in my soul, I think I probably would have said no. I think I would have looked at that call and said, it's too much for me, it's too hard. I don't think I'm brave or strong enough to enter into that kind of disruption. And it was during those places of pain and loneliness that I realized that I had said, Jesus is my best friend, but I wanted a physical friend. I had taught that Christ was my closest companion, but I wanted a companion who was gonna sit on the couch next to me and moan at all of my challenges and laugh at all of my joys. I wanted someone to be with me. And in those places of loneliness and that period of time during which I intensely was searching for companions, it was to the point that I would literally go to the grocery store and wander around the grocery store hoping I could find a friend. I would flat out ask people, do you want to go for a meal with me? And they would say, no. <laughs> it was during those moments that the kindness of Jesus became near to me in a way that I would never actually exchange. And the family of God in church community was actually, it was a significant part of that. It wasn't the only part of that. There was something about just the kindness of God meeting me that became my closest companionship. So when I first moved to the UK, I did actually arrive with this little suitcase of summer clothing, quite naive as to weather and patterns. And I'm an extraordinarily tall woman, which means I have extraordinarily big feet. And you can't see them on this particular video, but they are size 12 American, which is significant. It's impossible to find shoes. And the first week of moving to this country, I walked into a little charity shop and there were size 12 women's boots available in my exact size, fur lined, because at that point in time, I was still acclimating myself to the cold within my exact budget. And I remember just that little moment of picking up that pair of boots and thinking, this is the kindness of Jesus towards me. And there was a real sense during that season of my need and God's provision that I actually often look back towards with longing. Because everything I needed, as it says in that song, God's hand provided. But it was so natural and sweet and tender that it was exactly tailored to what I need, but never more than what I needed, and always in the right moment. So there was a beautiful South African woman who gave me a heavy coat that I wore for the winter seasons, and it fit me perfectly, and it was my only coat. I had a friend who was moving from England back to America, and she left me her whole house. So my bed, my dresser, my microwave, my toaster, my kitchen utensils, Everything was given to me by her. And there was something really beautiful about needing so much 
and having God provide for every tiny little detail. And I often call those kinds of moments winks from the Holy Spirit because almost no one else would walk by that charity shop and see that pair of boots and think, oh, size 12 boots, how kind is Jesus to have those in the charity shop? But because I knew how much I needed that thing and how appropriate and perfectly it was tailored to me, I took every one of those gifts as a little wink from the Holy Spirit Thank you so much for watching. We hope this video has blessed you. Our crowdfunding studio relies on the generosity of our viewers. So if you'd like to help us capture more conversations like the one you've just seen, you can find all of the information on how to give in our bio.